triumph until all his enemies bow. We have power over all the nations, cause we are riding on the eagle wings. Jesus, our head once was dead, but now he lives forevermore. Believe me what I say. We are the light of the world. We, we are, are a city that, that is set on a hill. We are the salt of the earth. Salt of the earth. Streams from the river of joy. But no man ever light a candle. Only to keep it in a hidden place. We are here on earth for a plan and a reason. Dominion is our call. We are not rats that run in a hopeless race. You are lions in a winning way. We have power over all the power of the enemy. The devil. Liga boshe ke tele bos kapaya lili adada bayados. Ye la gabo sheke tele boska. Jesus, sando lo bokosha, balandi gebo sheke le boska, baba baba baba. Blessed be your name, O God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Jesus. We worship you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. Welcome to Power Bible Study tonight. Give God the praise, give him the glory, worship him wherever you are joining us from. Begin to pray, begin to pray in the spirit, begin to worship him, begin to also send the invite to somebody, begin to invite someone to the study tonight as we round up this uh, teaching for that we have been on since last month just begin to give god praise invite them i know many people like prayer but invite them to 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 learn the to receive the word of god because the word of god is power the word of god is power is power is power i like you to worship him let's give god the praise and give him the glory blessed be your name forever ancient of days Ancient of days, we thank you, 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 Jesus. We bless your holy name, we thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. Blessed be your name, Jesus, Son of the living God, we thank you. Savior of the world, we bow before your majesty. We salute your excellency. Glory, 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 glory to your name, O oh God. Thank you for our lives. Thank you for the parents. Thank you for children. Thank you for everyone who is connecting and who will connect with us tonight. Lord, I pray that you will meet everyone at the very point of their knees. Give us a miracle. Give us a testimony. Let's grow together. Let's grow together. Let's grow together. Let's grow together. Help us to grow together in the name of Jesus. Help us to grow together in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, mighty God. We give you praise. We give you praise, Jesus. We give you praise, Jesus. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' precious name, we have worship. Mighty God, I thank you for tonight. Thank you for bringing us to learn at your feet. Thank you for this study as we round up the study tonight. Lord God Almighty, help us to, to actually grasp all that you have for us tonight. Help us to dig deep and go deeper and deeper and meet with us on an individual personal ground, oh God, and teach us by yourself on how we can tap into the resources, the giftings, the graces, the anointings that you have deposited into the pastors and the, the ministers that you have given to us. Help us, oh God, so that we take advantage of it, so that we can be blessed because you have packaged reward inside of them and we will not miss it. In the name of Jesus, Satan, we bind you 
right now we cast you out of the airwaves out of this environment out of this atmosphere holy spirit over to you absolutely lord take over my mind my mental faculties my spiritual mind my physical mind my intelligence take over my spirit my soul take over my body let my word be seasoned with salt and bring your word in the name of jesus Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. One more time, welcome to our uh, Power Bible study for tonight. Uh, this evening, I'm going to be uh, starting from this point, which I have titled, uh, The Eternal Benefit of Perception. The Eternal Benefit of Perception. I'll read the scripture, say one or two things, and then we'll just continue to discuss and talk from there. Luke chapter 17, Luke chapter 17, verse 10. Um, Jesus said to his disciples, things that cause people to, Jesus said to his disciples, things that cause people to stumble are bound to come. Take note of this. Things that cause people to stumble, they are bound to come. And now if they brought woe to anyone through whom they come, it would be better for them to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around their neck than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. So wash yourself. If your brother or sister sin against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. Look at the word Jesus is using there, the word must, you must, must forgive them. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. He replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted into the sea, and it will obey you. Uh, verse 7. Suppose one of you has a servant. Look at all the discussions he's having here. Now he has moved to another topic again now, another uh, topic of the discussion. He said, suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant, when he comes, in from the field, you return from work. Now, come along now and sit down to eat. Won't he rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink. After that, you may eat and drink yourself, even though himself and the servant were coming together from the same field. Uh, but the servant will still come to the house and the master will go sit down and the servant will still go into the kitchen and prepare food and still bring to the master and he will still wait on the master and make sure the master eat and the master drink and it's okay. He said, then he will now go afterward and the servant eat his own and drink his own. He said, will he thank the servant? He move it to another, another thing now. He said, will he thank the, the servant? because he did what he was told to do. <laughs> so you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, if you have done everything you were asked to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. So he's saying, you shouldn't expect, thank you. You have done what is needful. This is very, very powerful here. And I pray that the Lord will help us to understand what we are really, really talking about today. You know, very, very powerful here. So no matter how prayerful you are, I want to start from here. No matter how prayerful you are, for me, I have experienced this as a, as a pastor and as the general overseer of Mission House. I have experienced this over the years, over and over again. And I am open to any dimension of training and learning that God has for, for us, myself and my wife, no matter how prayerful you are, you must regret a few ordinations 
that you did under a very strong conviction. You had conviction. It was not as if you did it in the flesh. No, there were strong convictions you had, and then you ordained the person. Now, there are, there are some few ones you will surely regret. You know, even God regretted ordaining Saul a king over Israel. Yeah. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 10 to 12, the Bible says, Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. I regret that I have made Saul king because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Can you see the basis on which God regretted? You know, Samuel was angry and he cried out to the Lord all night, early in the morning. So though Samuel was angry at what Saul did, are you getting my point? But he was still praying before God. They all through, he did night VG for, for Saul. I, I don't know whether you get my point now. He didn't pray that, that, that Saul should die. He did night VG. Samuel took time. He did VG. Look at it. He said, he said, he said, Samuel was angry. He was angry. That one angry with Saul because God has reported this issue, the, 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 the unfaithfulness of Saul. He was now telling Samuel, Samuel, can you imagine? This guy have failed me. This guy have disappointed me. Now look at it. The Bible says Samuel was angry. Though he was angry, yet he cried out to the Lord all night. Lord intervene. Lord help him. Lord restore him. Lord save him. Lord don't let him perish. Lord su support him. Lord ha have your way. Reveal yourself to him. Pull him to yourself. Draw him to yourself. Open his eyes. Open he kept interceding for Saul. He had to take God again to come and talk to Samuel. Samuel is enough. I have rejected this guy. Go to the house of Jesse. I've, I've made myself, I've, not, I've, I've appointed myself another person. You see? So, so we have to be careful when we are dealing with, uh, with people within the church of God, with leaders, with uh, ministers and the people of God. It is a grand and pillar of the truth. So God is involved from beginning to the end. Let's continue that scripture. We are going to verse 12, 1 Samuel 15, 10 to 12. Early in the morning, Samuel got up and went to meet Saul. But he was told, Saul has gone to Carmel. There he has set up a monument in his own honor. So it was no longer after God. Now it was just after his own honor. My ego, my honor, my ego, my honor, my ego, me, myself, and I alone. And he turned and gone and gone on down to Gilga. So it is very important you take note that there are some ordinations that you will do, you will, you will regret it. And uh, the fact that you regret it does not mean that you did not do it in uh, in good conviction, in good conviction. So it is some of us that don't understand that don't, that was not here from the beginning. Well, the topic of our discussion is you and your pastor, you and your prophet, and there, we have been talking about so many things as it relates to this. And as we touch one and we touch the other, you will be learning from different different. You may not be a pastor, you are a member. You may not be a, just a member like that. You are a work, church worker. You may not be a church worker. You are a, you are a Christian. And so you need to learn all these things. Very, very important. It is during ordination service we ordain our rebels and lawyer sons. It is during the same ordination service. You don't know. You are, you are convinced that this person serving God is going to do well in the things of God, and, and there is no, no restriction. God is not telling you, when you presented the name before God for prayer, or you prayed, God didn't tell you, remove his name. Mm -mm. You will be, you'll be I, I, you know, did I not tell you the other day? Jesus called Judas and Thomas. They all fulfilled their calling. I repeat, it was Jesus. So don't, as a pastor, as a minister, I've, I told you I've learned this over the years. So, so it's not as if I just learned it yesterday. Over the years, I have learned that this is the, this, these are possibilities, possibilities. Jesus called Judas. It was Jesus that called Judas that ended up betraying him. It was Jesus that called Thomas. Thomas that doubted him so so much unbelief. I don't believe in this one. I don't believe in that one they're doing. I don't believe in that. It was Jesus that called them. <laughs> You'll be amazed. Uh, it was Jesus that called both of them. Very, very true, sir. Very true. Because Jesus prayed 12 hours to choose 12 apostles. But still, he chose a devil among the 12. Mm, one of them was a devil. That's what the Bible told us. Is in the scripture. 
Now, but I'd like to show you something, however. There, there, is, there is exodus. There is move, movement that must happen for, your, for the church to be healthy. Yes. I can say this over and over again. And I keep telling my minister friends, I keep telling people who listen to me, who hear me from time to time, I keep telling our branch pastors, there are some people that must leave your church for your church to be healthy. It's true. If they don't go, the church will go. I'm telling you, if they don't leave, the church will, will collapse for them. So it is easier to complain about your pastor than it is to pray for them. Pray for your pastor. And we have always said in the Bible, Paul kept up, they pray for us, pray for us, pray for us. Some of you believe, some of you believe that me, your pastor, I don't need prayer. And I have always told you, pray for me. I keep telling you, pray for me, pray for me, because your prayer works for me. The way my prayer works for you in your life, your prayer also works for me. Is very, very important. So it is important to work with people who celebrate you and are by no means intimidated by your presence or by your success. There are people that cannot stand you talking, succeeding, doing well. There are people that cannot stand other people doing better than them. Uh, that's 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 not the heart of a Christian. That's not the heart of a child of God. You, there is something inside of you that is called envy, that is called jealousy, that is called pride that you must deal with. If somebody else's success make you develop sleepless night or insomnia, then there is problem. Not with the person who is doing well, not with the person who is talking, but with you, you need to check it. It's very, very important. How do you perceive your pastor? How do you perceive your leader? How do you perceive your prophet? What is your perception about it? Can I quickly shift something in here? Because this is important. In our bid to avoid breakaways in ministry, we <laughs> can, may, may we not apply strategies that will hinder a breaking forth in the same ministry. Oh, we don't want them. To, we don't want this one to go. We don't want that one to go. In our bid to avoid breakaways in ministry, may we not apply strategies that will hinder a breaking forth in the same ministry. Some people that you are trying to hold, God has released them already. Holding them becomes detrimental to your own ministry. This is important. Very, very important. Hallelujah. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8 to 17. It's a long read, but I will read it because there's, there are some uh, lessons I want to glean. I want us to glean from there. 2 Kings chapter 4. Someone can just, uh, um, uh, media, can you please just project the, the verses of the Bible that I am quoting so that people can actually read it at their own pace. And you can study it later also. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 8. To 17. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman. Take note, a great woman was in that city. And she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in feeder to eat bread. And she said unto her husband. So it was the woman who went to her husband and suggested it. And her husband didn't say, you, have an, you are having an affair with the pastor. That's why you are suggesting it. There was nothing like that. You know? And she said unto her husband, behold now, I perceive. May God, may God give us the kind of perception that we transform our life and that we change our life. Perception. Perception. Clean perception. Positive perception. Pure perception. How do you see me? As Apostle Paul, you know, how do you see me? Perception is very, very, very important. Because, because how you see the anointed determines the flow of the anointing to you. Yes, this is very, and, and, I, and, and I can say this over and over again. Perception. 
there are people who are around a pastor, but they are not getting blessed by the pastor because of their perception is wrong. Meanwhile, there are people who are far away, but their perception is so is so powerful, so clean, and they are getting blessed. Amanda Makashida, they are getting blessed. They are getting blessed. Thank you, Jesus. You can just you all, all I need you to do is to just put the verse of scripture into the chat, the chat, and that will be okay. Hallelujah. Let's let's read on. Let's read on. Verse 9. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is an holy man of God. How did she know? Perception, which passed by us continually, passing this house every time. You know, and uh, let us make a little shamba. I'm reading the Bible. Let us make a little shamba. I pray thee on the wall. And let us set for him there a bed, a table, and a stool, and a candlestick, and it shall be when he cometh to us that he shall turn in feeder. And it fell on a day that he came hither, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said unto Gehazi his servant, Paul this Shunammite woman. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto him, Say now unto her. He was talking to Gehazi. Gehazi now talk to her. Behold, thou hast been careful for us. You have cared for me. Uh, uh, you cared for me so much. Uh, you know, now, what? If, if, with all this care, what is to be done for you? What do you want me to do for you? Do you want me to speak to the king on your behalf? Or do you want me to speak to the prime minister or the, or the president on your behalf? Okay, okay. And she answered, I dwell among my own people. I don't need all these things, man of God. I just did what I just did what God lay in my heart to do. It's not as if I'm looking for any favor, sir. Sir, that in the Lord, Papa. I'm not looking for anything, sir. I just did it for the glory of God, sir. It's not because of anything, Baba. No, 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 no. I just, I'm just doing it. I'm just doing it. I'm just doing it. Hello, I'm just doing it. <laughs> I'm just doing it. I just did it because I love God. I just, I just serve God. I'm just serving God. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm just indebted to this God, sir. Sir, sir, I love God so much. That's why I'm just doing all these things. Wow. <laughs> and he said to Gehazi, what then is it to be done for her? And Gehazi answered in verse 14. Now, Gehazi answered, verily, she had no child. And her husband is old already. Okay. And he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door and he said, about this season, about this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. You know what she, the woman said to the man of God? The man of God, wait, wait, wait. That area you are going, I don't have hope again in that area. Sir, I have given up in that area. Don't worry. I have told you already, don't worry, man of God. I have already given up in that area. My husband is old also. So, sir, we don't, no, no, just relax, sir. And she said, nay, my Lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaid. Uh -uh. It means that many people have been lying to her. Many pastors have lied to her. Many doctors have lied to her. They've done so many things. I don't care many people who have lied to you. But when your perception is right, a miracle is on the way for you. I'm telling you, the anointing will be released towards the direction of your perception. Look at it. She perceived. She perceived. Verse 17, which is the last, the last verse now. Look at what the Bible says here. Said here. Is it and the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elisha has said unto her, according to the time of life. The word came to pass. The word of the man of God came to pass because there was a woman that acted based on a perception, a clean, pure perception. She said, I perceive that this is a holy man of God. The Bible said to the pure, everything is pure. So she saw holy man of God. Elisha, Elisha may have been somebody that had flaws, that had mistakes, but what the woman saw was a holy man of God because the woman had a pure eye. 
if the woman had a sinful eye, what she will see in the man of God will also be a sinful man of God. So it's your perception. Her perception produces a miracle for her. How do you see Apostle Paul? How do you see me? How do you see my wife? How do you see we are your pastor? How do you see all? Now you are in that branch. Now you are in that church. Now you are in that local assembly. <laughs> How do you see that man of God there? How do you see that pastor there? The way you see him will determine how the anointing will walk towards your direction. I perceive. What does it mean to perceive? To perceive means to become aware and to become conscious of something. It means to come to realize or to understand something or a person or a process. To you know, perception, to perceive means to become aware of something by the use of one of this or all of your senses, especially the sense of sight, your eyes, what do you perceive? To be aware, what are you aware of? Can I really share something with you? As far as Adam and Eve were in the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil was also in that garden, but they never thought of eating from it. It was right there in their presence. They never thought of eating from it. They needed somebody to bring their attention to it. They needed someone to bring their awareness to it. Be careful who draws your awareness to something you shouldn't be aware of. Because there are things that once your perception is wrong, you, your disconnection has just begun. Oh my God. Your disconnection has just started. So you have to be careful. Yes, brother. Yes, my sister. You have to be careful. It's very, 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 very important. What I'm telling you is very, very important. You must connect with your pastor spiritually, and then you must connect with him physically. This is important. To interpret, what does it mean? To, to, to perceive, to perceive me, to interpret or to look on someone or something in a particular way. To be regarded in a certain way. It means to recognize. It means to discern. What are you discerning about your pastor? What are you discerning about your leader? This is important. This is very, very important. What it means to envision. It means to understand. This woman was right in her house. Only God knows what she was doing. Eyes kept on going. The man of God will pass. The man of God will pass with the servant. They kept going up and down, up and down. Do you know that later Gehazi got leprosy? If only he had perceived that this man of God that is my father and the Lord, I must not allow complacency to set in my connection and relationship with him. I don't want to be disconnected from him. You see? So you will always think, you know, somebody else outside. We are living in the in the era of uh, social media. <laughs> yeah, era of social media. Now, be careful because you will always think that one pastor you meet on Facebook is better than your pastor that you have in the church because of his packaging on social media, his packaging. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is important. Take note, perception. Perception is very, very powerful. It's very, very important. That if you are not even careful, you will start praying, oh God, I want my pastor to be like that pastor on, 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 on Facebook. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want my pastor to be like that pastor on, on Facebook. <laughs> One day, you, you, if, you are not careful, if you are not careful, you begin to walk away from your God-ordained pastor, from your God-ordained spiritual leader to become a member under that other person. And if you are privileged to ever get very close to that person you used to see and you used to wish your pastor to be, your former pastor to be like, <laughs> once you become close, then you will realize that your former pastor was an angel in human form. <laughs> stay where God has placed you. Yes, I'm telling you, stay where God has placed you. Don't allow over-familiarity 
with the grace of God upon your pastor to destroy you. No, don't allow it. And don't let anything drag you or pull you away from it. No. Stay with your original spiritual father. That new spiritual father you are looking for may be a new spiritual fighter. <laughs> I'm telling you. Be very careful. I beg you. I'm telling you. Be very careful. Somebody say, I don't care. I don't even care. I don't. Hey, please do. Please care. Be, be careful how you offend fathers. Some fathers won't fight you openly, but will destroy you completely. After ordination, sometimes some will rule well and some will, will become rebel. Re, some will rebel well. Some will rule well. Some will rebel well. Let's put it like that. And the difference is their individual health, not the not, not the oil that you pour on them. It is their perception. Once a perception changes, something changes. Yes, I'm telling you that. I'm telling you that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Celebrate your angel in the house. Celebrate your pastor. Celebrate your man of God. Because God has planted them there to be a blessing to your life. Now, can I quickly say something here? It is great members that make great churches, not great pastors. No, it is great members that make great churches. It is nothing is ever done overnight. That's why those people who are always in a hurry, they face, they always face horror. Oh, can't you see that? Can't you see that? Can't you see that? Can't you see that? You cannot compare a work of 50 years to a work of, of three years. You have to continue in your laboring. He said at the end, he shall speak. The vision will speak at the end, not at the beginning. Vision speaks at the end, not at the beginning. And then he said, wait for it. Wait for it. Though it tarries, it shall speak. Though it tarries, it shall speak. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Very, very, very important. Very, very, very important. It is good for church members to know what it means to be the sheep. The sheep that, maybe I will put it in a prayer form. May you become the sheep that the shepherd will never want to lose in the mighty name of Jesus. And there are ways to become that kind of sheep that no shepherd want to lose. During our leadership training Sundays, I'm going to begin to talk about some of these things. Is very important. Can I quickly say this? You don't mind sending your own son or another staff member to go look for the, the, this kind of sheep. Remember Saul's father called Saul. One sheep was missing. One sheep strayed away. His father called him and called one of the servants said, go and look for that sheep. One. He said, no, we are not going to stay there. We must look for the sheep that stray away. And this is, this, this is very, very instructive. This is full, full of messages for us. He speaks volume. He sent his son to go and look for a sheep. Sent another servant to go with the son. Go look for the sheep. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Do not doubt in the dark what you were told in the light. For the God who has called you will never fail at all. Do not doubt in the dark what you were told in the light. For the Lord who has called you has never failed before. He has never failed. He will never fail. I'm telling you. 
There is nothing wrong. Some people say, oh, maybe their connection with Jesus is wrong. Maybe, oh, maybe they are no longer doing well. Can I quickly say something to you? Can I quickly say something to you? We'll pray, pray with you later. Now, there is nothing wrong with your connection with Jesus. Nothing is also wrong with the boat you find yourself. Don't jump out of that boat. Please. And there is nothing wrong with your journey. Every journey, everyone's journey is peculiar to him in God. You are only praying, pay, I mean, you are only paying the price for life at the other side. You know, but because you are on this side now, you have to pay the price, this side of the divide, so that when you get to the other side, you begin to enjoy the benefit. But now you are paying the price and it looks as if you are not doing anything right. You are doing it. Keep doing it. And on that other side, only few people arrive there. Those who pay the price on this side arrive on the other side. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is important. This is very, very, very important. Hallelujah. Very, very, very important. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So you need daily empowerment. Somebody say empowerment. Yeah, you need daily empowerment to remain in your current boat without jumping out without disconnecting from your leader, without disconnecting from the pastor, you need everyday empowerment. Many Christians, you, you want to give up because you, are, you, are, you, are, you, you need empowerment to keep moving. You need empowerment to keep going. Receive that empowerment. Receive that strength. Receive that grace now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke confusion. I rebuke every discouragement. I rebuke every frustration in the name of Jesus Christ. So it's very important. We have different journeys. It's easy for you in Jesus' name. All right, let's continue. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There are some statements I want to make a very, very powerful statement. Some people now, your stomach will begin to somersault. <laughs> uh, this will begin to somersault. <laughs> what is loyalty? Loyalty is to be ready to sink with your father. What? Apostle, what are you trying to see? I'm not ready to sink with anybody. <laughs> uh, but that's what loyalty is, to be ready to sink with your father. But what do, you, what do, you, what do I mean by the word sink? So, so that you don't take it out of, out of context. Integrity is to help him avoid sinking at all times. So you will not need to sink with somebody if you have helped him to avoid sinking. And sinking with your father does not mean sinning with your father. No. It means standing with your father, standing with your pastor. It's very important. So know the difference. Standing with your father is different from, from, from sinning with your father. Somebody told me the other day, sir, overtaking is allowed, is permitted in this kingdom. I say, I agree. Overtaking is allowed. But remember, you are not on earth to overtake anyone. Be careful. You are right here. You are called by God to fulfill your own destination, your own purpose, your own destiny, to get to your destination safely. That is what God called you to do, not to overtake. <laughs> you are not, there is no competition in destiny. There is no competition. Purpose has no place for competition. They shall walk everyone in his path. They shall move everyone in his way and they shall not break their ranks. This is very, very important. They shall walk everyone in his path. They shall move everyone in his way and they shall not break their ranks. So don't seek to be better than your neighbor, but be better than 
what you wear yesterday. Don't seek to be better than your neighbor. Don't seek to be better than that other person. I want to. I want my job to be better than that one. To be better than that one. You are. You are. You are walking away from purpose. Seek to be better than yourself than who you were yesterday. Your focus should always be to fulfill your own divine agenda. And you don't have to use wrong means to get there. The, the one who called you will also help you to achieve it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can I quickly uh, share with you a, 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 one of the Bible story that I learned a lot from? Recently, eh, I learned a lot from this story. You remember the story that uh, David, between David, Uriah, Bechaba, who is Uriah's wife, who was Uriah's wife, and then Joab, who was the captain, the general, captain general of David's army. Remember how, how David slept with uh, Uriah's wife? And then the, that whole story, how Uriah came and Uriah didn't go home because he was, Uriah was loyal to, to, to the armies of Israel, loyal to the king, and loyal to, to Joab, the, the captain general. Now, but when Joab, when Uriah was asked to go back, David wrote a letter, gave the letter by the same hand of Uriah. Uriah never opened the letter. It was the letter for his death. It was his death letter. He took it with his own hand and gave it to the captain general, Joab. When he gave the letter to Joab, the letter read, place Uriah in the hottest part of the battle. Joab, because he was loyal to David, obey what David said. There is a difference between loyalty and integrity. Loyalty is very good, but integrity is a senior. Is, is senior. It is integrity that will tell you don't, don't follow the multitude to do evil. Are you getting my point now? One was very loyal. He could have, Joab could have acted in integrity. He would have suggested to David, sir, 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 let us not kill our, our own. He is one of our own. Let us not kill one of our own. That would be integrity. But he acted in loyalty. So the truth is this. We have to be careful. If you trust me to kill on your behalf, I should know what I am killing for. Are you getting my point now? This is very, very important. We have so many Christians who don't even think twice. Once they just hear, boom, they go. Oh, no. Loyalty must have integrity in, in view. So that we don't fall, you know, the other day I had a story of how about 70 something people died. Is it in one of these African countries? There's another time, so, so many years ago, a man told people that Jesus is going to come that year, so, so, and so day, and so, and so month. So they sold everything they have, and he told them that, no, 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 you don't need anything. Just be waiting and come, Jesus will come now. Just be waiting. <laughs> There was another time some, uh, a leader asked uh, his followers to take poison, that the world is too sinful for them, that they should take poison. These are all verified news in history. You'll be amazed how people will fool foolishly take some steps, some decisions, all in the name of loyalty. But they have misplaced integrity. Integrity. So while you are being called to be lawyer, please, please be, look, show integrity so that you do not become guilty of blood. You do not become guilty before the judge because the almighty is the judge of all. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Let me quickly say something about perception as it relates to leadership balance. Do you know that nobody can describe your father to you? 
Nobody should be, should be qualified enough to describe your mother to you. You should know your mother. Please, I, you hear your mother's name in the night. You should know that that is my mother's, my mother's voice. You are, it is well with you in Jesus' name. That is my mother's voice. You, you know that is my mother's voice. That is my father's voice in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for someone under the sound of my voice right now. I want to just pray for you. God is leading me now to pray for you under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I decree and I declare upon your life, you will not become a victim of the conspiracy of people. You will not innocently become a victim of con negative conspiracies in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at what this woman said. This woman, a man of God was just passing by. Some, some people have called me, some people connected to me through somebody, and now they are connected here now. Why some people are still going to connect with us? The time is coming that the Zoom meeting will feel of people, people, many. Are you getting my point? This same Zoom meeting will be full of people, but it will happen through you all, through you all that are here now. That is it. A time is coming, a time is coming, a time is coming that this Zoom meeting, there will be miracles, there will be signs and wonders as, as I'm talking, healings will be happening. Because it's happening already, but it, it will happen in a larger scale. But listen, before that time comes, we have to be faithful to what we are doing now. Because it says, if you see a man that is faithful in little, you, he says more should be given to that person. And then the other day, he says, see as that a man who is diligent in his business. He said, he said, he shall not stand before me, man, but he will stand before kings. Can I quickly share, share something with you? Never despise the day of little beginnings. That is how many people lose out on big stage, on big things, because they always despise small things. They never see big things. Because they always minimize mi uh, miracles, the little ones, and so they don't ever experience the big ones. I, 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 I charge you before God as your pastor. And as your spiritual eye, I charge you as the angel of the house, please, in the name of Jesus Christ, please celebrate every moment of your life. Every day is a plus. Every day is a plus. Celebrate every moment of your life. Celebrate every person in your life. Celebrate every individual in your life. Whether they believe it or not, whether they accept it or not, thank God that they were in your life. Please, let me tell you something. There are different kinds of people. Some people came to your life, they taught you lessons. Some people came to your life, they helped you to become the lesson. Some people came in through your life and they, 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 they become the center. They become the center of the whole structure of the lessons. It's very, very important. Very, very, very important. The Lord will help us in the name of of Jesus, hallelujah. Mando koshe keli adabakata yada. Legebo se braga doshki la mandeka. Rogo do zeke teleba kosha. Mandi agada, let your perspective be right. Get your perspective right. Divine perspective. You must be careful not to fall into what I call leadership witchcraft. <laughs> Yes, I'm telling you, there is what they call leadership witchcraft. You must be careful not to fall into it. Leadership witchcraft is because this person is, because you are not talking with this person, then you too should not talk. I am not talking with this person. Because me, your pastor, I'm not talking with this person, then you should not talk with this person. It's called manipulation. It's leadership witchcraft. Every man should be fully persuaded. And should be led by God, except that person is evil, is evil and wicked. Except there is obvious danger, then that would that would be a different matter. But we have to be careful. We have to be careful. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me quickly, let me quickly say a little thing about leadership balance. It's very, it's very, very, it's very, very important. Very, very important. You know. I have learned in my leadership, 
I have learned in my pastoral experience the way of humbleness, the way of humility. It's one of the things I have learned. That is why anybody can teach me and I can learn from anybody. I'm telling you. So as somebody who is a leader and as a father and as a church worker, you are going to have people that you are working under. The time is coming. You'll be leading people and you'll be wondering, wow, these are a lot of people. But when we, when we started, you know, where are the people? But, but time is coming. I'm going to, you are going to be leading many people. Just the way it is now in our headquarters church in Nigeria. I am wondering. Ah, ah. But I wonder, today we are running TV services and we are running uh, other places, running two services. Now, where were these people when we, when we started those days? <laughs> where were they? The same thing. So you need to understand all these things I'm talking about. Very, very, very important woman of God. Very important. I'm telling you very important. So as a father, for example, I learned to be humble enough to accept that sometimes my children are the ones right and I am the one wrong. Obviously. It, it, yes, obviously. That as a pastor, you are not always right. <laughs> it is, oh, you think it's, it's not true. It's the truth. You are not always right. And so it doesn't change the fact that you are still their spiritual father and pastor. Of course, they are not authorized to correct you. However, they are not also asked to follow you in error. So you see the balance. Ah, I can't be corrected by my children. Okay. However, my children also must not follow me if I am clearly in error. Clearly in error. Clearly in error. Underline. Clearly in error. Some years ago, let me quickly say this. Some years ago, oh, time. I'll just share this with us and then I explain something about perspective and then we'll, we'll close. Some years ago, we were having issues with closing church early. So I was not able to keep to our closing time on Sunday morning, most especially the second service arrangement. And nobody is, nobody is ready to talk to me about it. Why? Because I'm their father. I can't be corrected. I can't be corrected. In quote. So the error continued. It was an error. It continued. So the people for second service will always come and meet the people in the first service. And then uh, uh, most times we have no choice to, to even merge the service. So let's just do everything together. And those who will come now for the first service, they are angry. They are angry. For, for keeping them beyond the time that was announced. And those who are coming for second service are also angry that uh, you did not allow them to have a complete service, as it were. So everyone has been told, you can't correct your father. <laughs> the big question is this, I want to ask you. If I can't correct my father, can't I also give suggestion to my father? can suggest to even my biological father. So there is a big difference, brothers and sisters, between correction and suggestion. And who says you can be corrected? Who says it? Chapter what verse what? <laughs> Somebody will be laughing there. Now chapter what verse what? So everyone found a way to manage me with my error. Those days, they, they find a way. I'm talking about Nigeria, when I was in Nigeria. But something happened one day. <laughs> something happened one day. I will share this with you. I was not in church that, on that Sunday morning. And then uh, that Sunday morning, I wasn't in church, one of the Sundays. Uh, and I gave very strong instruction that the service must not close one minute late. It must not be a minute late. You must close at the right time, and and 
to, to, to the amazement of everybody. First service closed as, as announced. Second service closed as announced. In fact, some people came, large percentage of our members, they came late at the final stage of the second service because they were already getting used to, we will not close on time. And you can see, you know, um, it is always like this. Every time the father that no one can correct or give suggestion to is not in town. Every service will close on time, will close on time. You see the problem? You can see that in this contest, I, am, I was the one that need change. I was the one that need deliverance if there's any word like that. <laughs> I'm not the pastors. And not the members, and not the workers, and not the leaders. It was the senior pastor that need change. But the big question is, who can correct me or give suggestion to me? Let me say this quickly. Any church, any church, Say this now, where the father, the pastor, or the leader cannot be told respectfully when he is wrong or cannot be given suggestion where necessary, is a disaster waiting to happen. You can quote me anywhere. It's a disaster waiting to happen. I'm giving you story of what happened over 10 years ago. Disaster. Why do you think we have National Council of Elders in Mission House? I told my elders some years ago, if I die in any of my errors that they are aware of, my blood will be on their head. I told them. Even the issue of closing, of the closing time, they have discussed it with me, but they can't force it on me. I understand. I had to change. I had to change. Oh, yes, I had to be delivered. <laughs> I pray, may God raise for us leaders that are open to suggestions, leaders that are open to change, leaders that are open to correction in any regard, in any way, in the name of Jesus. And if you have them, hold them, cherish them. They are a blessing. They are a blessing. Any church that doesn't have proven elders that can call the pastor to order when there is need to do so is a time bomb. Put me anywhere. Even in heaven, there are 24 elders. Have you not read it? <laughs> Let's pray. Even in heaven, there are 24 elders. Heaven, no. heaven of heaven, that is the throne of God. God still has elders. And if they are 24, see council of elders, even in heaven. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. May your perception be right. May your perception be okay. May you live a, a balanced Christian life. As a leader, as a worker, as a church member, may you become a lifeline, a life wire that we make the work of God to move forward, that we make the church to progress and keep moving forward in the name of Jesus. May you be open to change. As pastor, may we be open to change. May we be open to suggestion. May we be open to counsel. May we be open to advice in the name of Jesus. As a biological father, as a biological mother, as a wife, as a husband, may you be open to change. May you be open to suggestion. May you be open to advice in the name of Jesus. Those days, we used to call my daddy the lion of the tribe of Ibinogene house. When you hear my daddy's car on, pam, 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 everybody, you are on your heels. You take over. <laughs> you take over wherever you, even if you are not a serious student, you go and carry your book and be looking like this. You were not carrying your book before. <laughs> 
Well, there is an advantage to that, but it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that. No, 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 no. It shouldn't be like that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Let us pray. In the name of Jesus. I want you to pray in the name of Jesus. It was a woman that saw the prophet. The husband didn't see the prophet. And the husband was not suspicious. Saying, hmm, this pastor that you are talking to, hmm, this man of God, why will you be bringing this suggestion now? That room, I placed that room there for rent. That room is Junior's room. I'm not giving my son's room. <laughs> the, the, the husband didn't also say that. They came together husband and wife, based on the perception of one. The Bible didn't tell us that the husband perceived. Mm -mm. It was the perception of the wife. And the husband trusted that perception. Can you, can you understand my point, brothers and sisters? The husband trusted that perception. Said, hmm, honey, yeah, that's true. Hmm, wow. My love, that, this thing you are talking about is true. We can do it now. Let's arrange that room for, for the pastor. He didn't say they, they were not related in any way. There was no prior connection in any way. They just perceived. The man of God didn't. They just perceived that this is a man of God. This is a holy man of God. It was because their mind was holy. It was because their heart was pure. That is why they could see purity in the man of God. If their heart was, was perverted and sinful and corrupted, they would say, mm, this man of God, the way he be, the bears, the way the, the garment is, they will see suspicion in it also. It's your perception. It's your perception. Ah, this thing that this man of God is doing now ah, is like a fake prophet. It's, like a fake, it's your perception. Ah, this thing that this man of God, my goodness, God is speaking to you. God is using him. It's your perception. To the pure, all things are pure. To the holy, all things are holy. To the unjust and unholy, all things are also perverted and corrupted and unholy. May God give us a holy eye. May God give us holy perception, clean conscience, clean mind, so that when we do things, when we relate with people, we we'll relate with people with clean mind, with clean heart, in the name of Jesus, so that the anointing of our pastor will work for us. The grace upon the man of God will work for us. In the name of Jesus. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. I pray that the grace of God will abide with you. Today, I pray for you. Your perception, your perception will be sharp, will be pure, will be clean in the name of Jesus. It will attract the anointing of Apostle Paul. It will not get to work for you. It will attract the anointing of other men of God to work for you. Remember, I remember those days. We'll be watching preaching on the television like this. And the man of God will be praying, will be preaching. He will preach and preach and go to a point. You now say, Lay your hands on the screen. And then we will lay our hands on the screen. And then the man of God will be praying, I release the anointing of, of God upon you. I will say, I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. These days, when man of God is preaching, it's like we have some extra goggle on our eyes. Mm. Mm. The lens that we are using. We are not having one lens. The lens is multiple lens. Hmm. I know because, it, because of the corruption and the abuse in the whole system. But the truth is this, God still have the true ones. God still have the remnants that have not bowed down their knees to bow. God still have armies. God still have generals. God still have pastors. God still has ministers called by his name who have not soiled their hands with the, king, the portion of the king's meal, who have not soiled their garments with the portion of the king's meal. I pray today in the name of Jesus. May the Lord open our perception to them. May we perceive clearly. May we see clearly. May we understand accurately. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, from today, from today, you know what the mother of Jesus told, told the disciple? He said, anything he asked you to do, do it too. That was his biological mother. He didn't say, my son. My son used to talk. Well, he said it's called by God. He said, well, I don't know. You know, they, they, they went to, the mother went to him, said they have no wine. And he told the mother, my, my time has not come. But the mother told the disciple, anything he asked you to do, do it all. Don't, don't minimize his spiritual instruction. 
This, my son, is called by God. I pray for someone under the sound of my voice. From today, may the oil of God work in your life. May the oil of God work for you. Listen, when your perception is right, ordinary God bless you by your pastor. Boom, miracles will start happening. Ordinary, it is well with you. Testimony will come. Ordinary, you are healed in Jesus' name. Simple, you will discover that cancer will dry up. Headache will disappear. Blind eyes will open. You don't need so much. Once your perception is right, it draws the anointing towards your direction. I pray today in the name of Jesus. May the anointing of the Holy Ghost work for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, mama la baka shamba yada. Eh, la ba 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 ba. Kando logo bosi yada ba. He said, believe in the Lord your God. You shall be established. Believe in his prophet. You shall prosper. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Prosper from today. Whatever you put your hands to do, prosper from today. In the name of Jesus. 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 Any weird things and situations are tight for you. From today, I release you in those areas. I release you in those areas. Ah, my God. I release you in those areas. I say release your perception. Let your perception be intact right now. There is an anointing flowing. There is an anointing flowing. There is a river flowing. In the name of Jesus. Wherever things and situations have been tight for you. Whatever you have been believing God for, I ask that they be released to you. May the tight situation be loosened up. Ah, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Begin to worship him everywhere you are. Give him praise now. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him all the glory. What a mighty God we serve. Hey, heaven and earth adore him. Angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I cover everyone under the sound of my voice with the blood of Jesus. It is well with your spirit. It is well with your soul. And it is well with your body. Thank you. From glory to glory for you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Don't forget we talk about divine perception. Divine perception. And then we looked, about, looked into leadership balance. You know, it's very important that you balance it. Balance it. Balance it. It's very, very important. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. I want to remind you tomorrow morning, again, we will be at the mountaintop. 30 minutes on the mountain of prayers. We'll be there 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. Set your alarm and connect with us. It's going to be powerful. It's